Sam and I are sitting here discussing what to do with this car because it is not going to be easy to pull the motor. So instead of pulling the motor, Sam, what did you say we should do? I think what we should do is say, okay, good. It's going to be a nightmare to take that out. So I say we put the whipple on it and let this dog eat. Let it eat. Let it eat. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. My garage project is finally getting closer. I moved into my house, although it's not done yet. I'm working on it like all day, every day. And so I wanna give you guys a tour of what I'm doing, including this crazy lighting, the lift, a welding table. And I'm also putting on some motion side-by-side -side products on my Can-Am. As you can see, I got the lift in, got my hood from my Ranger, from the Danger Ranger hanging on the wall, got all my deer mounts hanging up. Y'all have been asking a lot about these deer, so I'm gonna tell you each one story real quick. This was the first deer I've ever shot. It's a white-tailed doe. I shot it with a rifle when I was probably like 12 or 13 years old. And then this was the first buck I ever shot, and this was with my bow. It was a compound bow, you know, it was a Matthews. I shot it out of a tree stand. This deer right here was shot in Northern Nebraska at a friend of mine's property. His family owned the property for a really long time. They'd never really shot anything big out of there, so they let me go up and hunt, and I shot the biggest buck they had ever seen on that property, so kind of a funny story. This guy here was shot in the sand hills of northern Nebraska as well with my buddy. We crawled up on these deer for like a mile, and there was about four or five bucks laying on a fence put line, and we jumped them, and we, he shot the bigger one, I shot the smaller one, because I shot the bigger deer the year before. This deer was shot in Gretna, Nebraska with a muzzleloader, 50 caliber. And then this deer here was shot with a rifle on the same property. And I thought it was a deer that had a drop time that I had trail camera pictures of, but it was pretty early and I couldn't see him all the way, but it still ended up being a pretty decent buck. But yeah, I haven't hunted in like 10 or 15 years, but I've always kept my mounts because I think they're great trophies. And here is the welding table I made up. I'm gonna shoot you guys to a time lapse right now of what that entailed. All right, so for the leg on the old welding table, I squared off a piece of inch and a quarter. And I've got these little legs I'm gonna put in here. That way it's adjustable. Ow, it's hot. So I'm drilling a little hole on the end. All I did is wear up, or all I did is weld up a little cap for the end of that and grind it down. It's not pretty, but she'll do. I'm gonna get this in here and weld that nut. Okay, there it is, my first ever welding table. Oh man, is that satisfying. God, these projects can take a long time. If y'all have never welded before, I highly recommend this Prime Weld TIG 225. I literally took it out of the box, turned it on and followed their instructions and was able to weld up this table, which I had never done something like this before. Prime Weld makes it super easy as everything in the instructions, it literally comes with everything you need except for a helmet, gloves, which you can get, I think on their website and you just gotta get your own gas, but you can literally do this at home. I had never done something like it before. Prime Weld made it super easy. And the first project I got is putting on the tree kickers by Motion Side by Side. They make a really cool kit, and basically what it stops you from doing is if you're fish tailing or hauling through the trees and you catch one in between your front and your rear tire, and ripping off like a radius rod or trailing arm or something like that. Well, Motion made this super easy because as I was trying to find the holes of the roll bar it goes through, there's actually small indentations on the plastic where the hole in the roll bar lines up. So there's one right there. It's not that guy. Moving down, there's one right here, you can see. And then the one up high is right there. So all you have to do is drill these holes out. Same thickness, it looks like it's about an inch inch and a quarter or inch and a half 
hole here and these should bolt right on with the, with the hardware that they included. All right, so I did the passenger side first. Something I learned from this is I tried to drill the holes as small as possible. So basically the same size as the bars and it made it really difficult to line up the bolts that were coming through the roll bar. So if I ever recommend you doing this at home, oversize your hole by about half an inch and that'll make putting all three of these bolts on a lot easier. Sam and I got the blower out of the Hellcat in about, what do you say, 20, 30 minutes? About, yeah. Not bad yeah. for our first time. No We're gonna take her apart and assess the damage. See what the deal is. Yep. This thing's got a lot of map sensors. We got one here. Or that's intercooler tap. And then we got a map sensor here. There's another one under here and another one over there. It's crazy. This thing's all the computers. All the computers. Alright, go ahead and pull it. Oh, look at that. No. That'll do it right there. Probably right there. That'll do it. That'll oh, do look it. at this. The abrasion on the hat. Mm -hmm. Particles are flying. There's been some stuff going on in here. I wonder if there's metal on the other side of these. Uh, or, or the air is actually coming this way, right? The air comes up and then back down through right these. Down through, uh, the, through the block. Through the air and water. Right. Yep. Oh, look at this. Oh. That'll do it. No yeah, bueno. Yeah, that's metal. Well, that wraps it up for taking apart the Hellcat. At least we know exactly what went wrong. The blower is completely seized up because it's a broke did. And now we got to figure out what we're going to do to put this thing back together. Obviously, we need to do some kind of forced induction again on this motor, put some fresh plugs in it, and get her back going. Because I miss driving this thing. All right, show me what you're working with. Hold on, this thing. So now then we got, we're going to take this off. So we took the screws. There's four screws in here. Go right in here at the corner of this. Yep. I just so when we take them out, then we got to take. The, All right. Oh the, yes, you're right. Then you can raise your brick up. Mm-hmm. Oh and try that, yes, yes. Carrying case there, and there it is. Very nice. Very very nice. You can see the other side of it. Mm-hmm. This looks pretty good. Actually, it looks pretty good. We'll take that. And this How's one this does one? the same. Come out. Let's go on it. Just a little spray brake cleaner on it. Yep. Same okay. thing. Okay, if anyone wants them, these are for sale. There they are. Let me know. Now I'm working on getting this valve cover off so we can take a look at this hurt cylinder over here and see if there's anything going on that we can see. Sam and I, Sam and I have got the valve cover off and we are rotating the motor over inspecting these valve springs and looking for any foul signs of play, right? Mm -hmm. Sam and I are now inspecting the push rod mums and they are straight as a circle. I mean, they're actually really straight. They're not as straight as a circle, but what do you think? Top end's fine. I guess we don't know. Well, Let's pull the head, but. The, the one similar was the offender. I did not see any breaks in the valve springs. And the push out looked good. The yep, they looked nice. Sense. Both of them looked okay. Yep. So, so probably, yeah. probably a piston ring issue. A land on the piston. No, I got a cam guy for one of these. A cam guy? I think you gotta pull the whole motor to switch a cam out on this thing, yeah, probably. You just pull the stuff out of your way. Oh yeah, no, but it's a big deal. Cam, single cam shot, you know, you just got one of them. I don't know, dude. Mm -hmm. On cam motion, dude, get you a bump stick bobby spec cam shaft. Sam and I are sitting here discussing what to do with this car because it is not gonna be easy to pull the motor. We know it's a bottom end issue now. The head looks fine, the valves look fine. So it's gotta be a piston ring that's broken or something along those lines. So instead of pulling the motor, Sam, what did you say we should do? I think what we should do is say, okay, good. It's gonna be a nightmare to take that out. So I say we put the whipple on it and let this dog eat. Let it eat. Let it eat. <laughs> <There> it <is. laughs>
As a fellow car guy, I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track. We're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. That's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only 39 bucks. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's basically the same thing as a Sonicare except a tenth of the price. So go get one. They send you a new brush out every three months so you don't have to worry about it. It's a great deal.